Greenwood Free Methodist Church, Jamin Bradley. Hey, Jamin. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Hey, you too. Uh, your church is on a uh, construction <laughs> zone on Greenwood, so. Yeah, I remember when I got the letter that they'd be tearing down our road. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, well, hopefully oh, well. that happens at a summer. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be nice when it's done. It's almost done. Yep. yep. So people can still get to your church. You have a big parking lot in the back. Yeah, and most of our parking's all in the back anyway, so yeah. it works out well. All right, well, let's talk about uh, some new things happening at 1208 Greenwood. First up, we have a new website. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, we just launched it. Uh, we've got a new model that's getting ready to go in uh, September 11th, and it kind of features three different uh, uh, hourly blocks within the schedule. So 9 a.m. is what we call the Lord's Breakfast instead of the Lord's Supper. And it's kind of a potluck-based cereal bar. I don't know if you've been in, like, urban areas where they've got uh, uh, restaurants that are just entirely dedicated to cereal. So pulling off that idea. And then our worship service, which kind of blends some different kinds of genres and deep teaching and then kingdom ministry for people to stick around and grab whatever physical or spiritual needs they want. So the top of the web page kind of goes straight through that. And then as you scroll on, you get uh, the different kind of weekly events that we have going on and all other kinds of things. It sounds familiar to me because I think you had food connected to your worship service before. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we uh, used to run what we called a dinner church, uh, which was more or less like doors open at 4.30. People came in from 5 to 6, had a organized potluck dinner uh, where we worked hard on the food to make it good and whatnot. And then 6 to 7 was uh, our service and people would come and go at their own convenience. So. Uh, once COVID hit, you know, everything just got so difficult to keep it going the way it was and it struggled to kind of get the relaunch. So we started praying and thinking about a redesign that might accent like a post pandemic world. So that's where this came from. Well, we actually, for those uh, interested in what a dinner church looks like or breakfast church, um, mm -hmm. this is a clip you brought that uh, showcases the, the dinner church. Let's take a look. Wow, you've got a lot going on there. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, it was about 40 people that planted it, and like right before the pandemic hit, we were just hitting triple digits, and then, yeah, we, we were like, all right, time to think again. So it does not look like a traditional church. You're yeah. actually in a storefront. Yeah, I mean, it's an old radio factory at one point before it was turned into uh, Comunidad Agua Viva, and then we united that church with another church into... 1208 Greenwood. Didn't have a name for it when we united them, <laughs> called it by the address, and it just kind of stuck. So, Yeah, it's cool. So it's unusual in that it's not uh, a, a church that uh, really has a denomination in the name or a saint, or it's, it's, your, it's where you are on the street. Yep. Let's uh, take a look at some of the shots. This is your space, your worship space, your dinner space, your community needs space, all, all in one big spot. Yep, everything goes down right in there. We decided some time back that we would buy tables instead of the kind of, you know, organized seating that most churches have and that we would try to make things happen around there. We started running these food banks as well uh, that we partnered with Compassionate Ministries of Jackson to give us food and then we'd give it out as uh, those came in. Um, so yeah, it's undergone a lot of changes over the last few years and we just keep trying to 
change ourselves until we find the ways that we can reach different parts of our community. So we've had home churches that reach out. We've had churches that have been designed for different kinds of people, like a nerd church that tries to reach like the comic concrete uh, community, things like that. Um, try to stay apt at mission projects like this picture and, and all that. So yeah, it's been a um, fun experience and ever staying on our toes to try to reach the people of Jackson. Nice. Well, just looking at the photos, obviously it's uh, successful. You've got a lot of people that are attending uh, your events and, and yeah. your, uh, your mission and worship services. Yeah, this one right here, that's the nerd church we started. So just <laughs> instead of nerds feel like they have to be on the outside, how can we take video games and incorporate that into uh, outreach and, and bringing people in? So. In one shot you're wearing, I'm a ragamuffin. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, um, it's, uh, old one of my favorite books by Vernon Manning, Ragamuffin Gospel, which is all about people at the bottom or feeling on the outside or outcasts and whatnot, reaching out to them. And that's very much been the ethic of what we've tried to do as a church and what my heart really is as a pastor. So, During the pandemic, did you have to switch to an online model? We did. We uh, actually the video that we just watched a little bit ago, that was our theme song. So a lot of churches just like kind of broadcasted straight, just talking. We created a church TV show. So songs would be like little segments that come up. And uh, then I tried to make my messages more documentary esque with like overlaying zoomed in mm -hmm. images and whatnot. So uh, that went a lot of different routes. Uh, some of the things we took online stayed online. Nerd Church, for example. We play all the video games online and talk through a Discord channel, and then other things started getting back in person, just depending on each thing and its needs at the time. So. We actually have a clip of your online church. Mm. Let's look in on that. I can't tell. Is it a comedy? Is it a reality? Is it a mystery? <laughs> that one was designed, uh, we launched Jackson Cloud in the middle of the pandemic thinking, we don't know when this is over, or when we're coming out of this. Maybe there will be some people who can never go out again because they're just too sick to risk it. And we actually have a few people that have, they are so sick they have hardly left the house in like mm -hmm. two years now. I know many people that are not yeah. going to go back to church uh, for their, to keep themselves safe. Yeah, and so that one was intentionally launched to say not how do we go online until we're ready to come back. Jackson Cloud was how do we go online, stay online. Mm -hmm. And we're still figuring that out because that's kind of a newer process, but uh, uh, we've got like over 200 videos at this point of different things for people to engage in. Well, it seems like there's so many unconventional things you're doing uh, as as a church. Uh, but uh, what about the basic uh, the basics? How how you meet the needs of the the members of your church, the people that are uh, maybe there's some people that um, are impacted by the pandemic financially. What are some of those things you're doing? Yeah, so we've partnered up with different organizations that have been trying to help. So we're not reinventing the wheel every time. So like Compassionate Ministries of Jackson, as soon as as soon as it hit, they're like, we've got a bunch of bags of food. We're looking for different churches just to deliver when someone calls in your area. So like we'll deliver food to people as they need it, partner with them in food banks when those are needed. Um, the, the new hour of just ministry needs in our next iteration of our services is intentionally, hey, do you need some clothes? There's a clothing room in the back. Go see what you need. Grab it out of there. Maybe you need some food. We've got some supplies over here. Check through it, grab what you need. Um, maybe some uh, um, hygiene products, so on and so forth. So uh, one of the beauties of Dinner Church is we spent so long trying to figure out how to reach kind of the homeless and impoverished crowd. And that one really did the trick as uh, some other churches around Jackson have kind of done something similar. They've seen the same thing. So um, as we bring in people in need, then we try to figure out how to kind of get in their lives and 
and bring about what they're looking for, which sometimes is a simple, here's some food, and other times, like I've had people in our church literally take a, a homeless man into their house to live with them for several weeks until he got his very first apartment, you know? Hmm. And that was just like the investment of, I just pour out my life for you to help you out however ah, you need it. So. That's a lot. Yeah. So the, the, the magic was getting, getting the food, getting, giving people food to come to church. Which, unshockingly, as a <laughs> church person, I should have picked up, in the Bible is like constantly Jesus is like, I meet people, I eat with people. I meet people, I eat with people. So yeah. uh, you'd think we'd catch on to that a little bit more often in church ministry, I guess. So. We've got the um, Reveal hmm. Conference, October 15th. What is, what is that? Yeah, uh, so we did our first one the day before the pandemic hit yeah. as the news was going out like can people still meet anymore We're like we don't know we've been waiting <laughs> for this for like <laughs> half a year so uh we did our first one uh and the whole focus is just kind of on engaging the holy spirit spiritual gifts teaching people to grow in their faith so that they can go out and do ministry on the road and so this next one has kind of a focus on uh spiritual gifts in the same way how do you meet with the holy spirit when you're talking to people about who Jesus is, how do you do deliverance ministry, how do you um, engage God through music, things like that. So it's kind of just like a one-day event really dedicated to people just uh, engaging in, in spiritual growth. So who's the, the, who's the church for? Uh, obviously, you've got, you're have got you serving the neighborhood, mm. but outside of the neighborhood. Yeah, uh, like the whole church or our church? Or? Your church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, part of our old vision was we create different kinds of churches that reach different kinds of people because we don't want anybody to, to miss out. So like the Jackson Cloud was, all right, let's create something new that reaches people online. Uh, nerd Church was, all right, we have a bunch of nerds in our church. Let's use this. Let's go to the Mega XP Jackson's Comic Con, basically, and set up a booth and tell people to come play games with us. And we stop talking about Jesus. You can stick around if you want. You can leave, whatever you want. Um, and then our breakfast direction with the new model is uh, aimed at reaching everyone. You know where our church is. Mm -hmm. Like, You drive one direction, eventually you get to the mansions of Jackson. The other direction is the homeless shelter. The other direction is impoverished, and the other direction is like middle class. So we want to be able to reach the diversity of our entire uh, uh, neighborhood and wherever people find themselves. So some of the things that are still online can literally reach anyone, whether you're in Jackson or not. And the other things uh, are very focused right here as our mission statement goes in Jackson as it is in heaven, so. So just show up. When does the first, when does your, does your new format uh, start on Sundays? Uh, September 11th. So that's the day that rings in all of our ears when we hear it. But for us, we hope to bring a little bit of redemption to that day um, and invite people to sit at a table with someone they don't know enjoy a meal and then uh, stick around for service if they want and stick around for the community needs after. So. Cool. Well, good luck. Yeah, thank you. It'll be interesting to hear how it goes. Mm -hmm. The pastor of 1208 Greenwood Church, Jamin Bradley. Birthdays are coming up next. We, uh, I think, even have an anniversary uh, 